In the previous video, we discussed about the Hardy Weinberg principle, also called as Hardy Weinberg equilibrium. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about the Hardy Weinberg equation. To understand this equation, we take a homologous pair of chromosomes on which two different alleles are present. Let's mark the first allele as letter A in uppercase, which happens to be a dominant allele. The next allele is letter A in lowercase which happens to be a recessive allele. As we already know that hardy weinberg equation deals with the frequency of alleles and genotypes and this equation describes how alleles and genotypes attain equilibrium when evolutionary influences are absent which we have already explained in the previous video what these evolutionary influences are like mutation, gene flow, genetic drift and all these. Let's see the frequency of alleles first. We assign letter P for the frequency of allele A dominant one and q denotes the frequency of allele a a in lowercase that is the recessive allele so according to hardy weinberg equation the sum of both the frequency of dominant allele and the frequency of recessive allele should be one or hundred percent we can say the equation can be written as p plus q equals one this is the first equation for hardy weinberg principle at allelic level because we are talking about alleles here p plus q equals one this only happens when evolutionary influences are absent. Suppose the frequency of dominant allele is 0.8, then we can calculate the rest of frequency. While we see Q comes to be 0.2, that means the total will be 1 or we can say 100% because the evolutionary influences are absent, population is at equilibrium, which validates the hardy weinberg equilibrium only when evolutionary forces are absent. So this was a case with allele frequencies. Another condition for hardy weinberg principle is that of genotype frequencies where it is stated that these frequencies also remain the same when evolutionary forces are absent. And for genotypes we consider a locus with two alleles and the equation for two allele is written as twice p plus q like this for allele 1 and for allele 2. This equation can be written as p plus q whole square which upon simplification gives the final equation p square plus 2pq plus q square equals 1 which is the hardy weinberg equation. So this is the final equation for hardy weinberg equation. Now what these p, q, 2pq denotes? p square is the frequency of homozygous dominant genotype that's AA while 2pq is the frequency of heterozygous genotype that's uppercase A and lowercase a. And Q square is the frequency of homozygous recessive genotype AA both in lower cases. Now let's try to understand this equation with the Mendelian cross. Because Mendelian factors do not alter the frequency of genes or alleles. Only two factors exist when the equilibrium is present that's genetic recombination and Mendelian segregation. Let's say in a population of wildflower say 80% frequency is of allele A dominant allele or we can say 0.8. And when we simplify the equation, the frequency of recessive allele comes to be 20% or 0.2 because we have already calculated that in equation first. Then upon crosses, they will give us two gametes, a dominant allele and a recessive allele. Dominant allele and recessive allele with P and Q frequencies respectively as shown in the diagram. When we cross them, we get the following data with frequencies. P square comes to be 0.64 while Q square comes to be 0.04 and the frequency of heterozygous genotypes comes two times 0.16 that's why we denote it with 2PQ. Upon calculation we get the following values P square that's 0.64 twice PQ that's 2 is multiplied with 0.16 because AA that's a heterozygous genotypes is two times in the cross then Q square comes to be 0.04 then finally upon calculation we come to know that population is at equilibrium because left hand side equals the right hand side it's from generation to generation that the frequency of alleles and genotypes remains the same when evolutionary forces are absent so this is the cross which validates the hardy weinberg principle so in this way the hardy weinberg equation comes in handy where always we can see the deviations from equilibrium because evolutionary forces are always present in nature 
So we can say the hardy winbo equation is often used as an initial test of whether evolution is occurring in a population or not. So this is all about hardy winbo equation. If you want to watch the video of the hardy winbo equilibrium, the link pops up here. You can watch that video first, then watch this video so that you may understand it very well. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.